Okay, students and guests, welcome. Uh, welcome any visitors that are with us right now. We're happy that you're here tonight. Um, most of you students know that you can miss one lecture and still pass this class, and I thought maybe this would be uh, a night where no one would be here, but I'm impressed most of you are here tonight. This is really awesome. So we are absolutely thrilled that uh, Logan and Ellie are going to speak tonight. Um, it's exciting for me. We've had five students this year in the series that have come through our program here at Utah State. And uh, hopefully in the future, all of our speakers will be you, the future speakers in our series. But uh, Logan and Ellie have the distinction of being the first speakers that have built a successful company that are still students right now at Utah State. So that's pretty amazing. Yeah. Uh, they have an amazing story, and uh, Haley is going to introduce them formally, and then we're just going to go ahead and get started. So. We're super excited to invite um, Logan James and Ellie Cram to present for us tonight. Um, this is a little fun because Logan's my brother and Ellie's my soon-to-be sister-in-law, so I thought that was a little funny. <laughs> um, but yeah, they are current students at Utah State, as we know, um, and their company is Thrift Jam. Thrift Jam is a sustainable cl clothing company um, that they run on a school bus. So they started this venture three years ago to support their college education. Um, and what began as a side hustle for them um, has rapidly evolved into a full-blown business endeavor. Um, and it reaches by, beyond the university. They do this at home, um, all over the state. Um, one thing I know, they've sold in every state in the US. That's pretty cool. Um, so with their engagement in the Center for Entrepreneurship, they've wholeheartedly embraced hands-on learning and reshaped their career, career aspirations. Notably, Thrift Jam has now taken precedence as their foremost career plan. Their journey underscores their transformative shift from conventional academia to purposeful entrepreneurship. And Thrift Jam isn't your average clothing store. It's a mission to redefine fashion and sustainability at its core. Logan and Emily have transformed three old school buses into mobile clothing stores, delivering a unique shopping experience. Within these mobile stores, customers find a hand-picked selection that includes vintage classics and limited edition high-end items, each meticulously crafted from discarded textiles that would have otherwise ended up in landfills. Their commitment to salvaging and upcycling textiles has already diverted tens of thousands of pounds of waste, converting it into timeless, high-value clothing. So welcome Logan James and Ellie Cram. Thanks, Haley. Um, so like she said, we are Thrift Jam. <laughs> and thank you guys for being here on Valentine's Day. We know it's super romantic. We're here too. So we're excited to tell you a little bit more about our story. Clicker issues. What's up, Jordan? It's working. Okay, why are we here? We do not know. We are not qualified. <laughs> we pretend like we are. So we, when Mike asked us to speak, I was very much caught off guard because, like he said, we're students here. Um, and most of the people that speak on this stage are millionaires. They've had billionaires on this stage. And it's crazy for me to get an email from Mike lumping me into that category. And so I really, after thinking about this over a few months, I think it's good for us to be here because sometimes when I'm listening to the like wildly successful people that have made their fortune, it feels a little out of reach, right? Like it's inspiring, but it's like, I don't know how to get from where I am to there. And so I feel like we might be a good middle ground to where you guys could get from not having a business to being where we are in a span of a year. Um, and so I think that's kind of a good gap we fill. Yes, very attainable. Um, Okay, we're gonna start with introductions. Can I have a Yeah. Okay, my name's Ellie. Um, I'm a 
originally from Lehigh. We both are, actually, that's where we met. And then I'm a marketing major. I will graduate this summer, so summer 2025, hopefully. Um, oh, I love all things fitness. I love to hike, run, I do yoga, weights, all that good stuff. I'm, well, we both are. We kind of developed into foodies. True. We love eating, <laughs> which is why I love fitness. Um, I'm really competitive. All of my family and friends can attest to that. I get a little too competitive sometimes. Um, I love to travel. This last year, oh, I guess it was like two years ago now, I was able to go to Europe, and that was super cool with my family. And I have no other hobbies because I have absolutely no free time in my life. And that's that. That's about it for me. All right, on to me. <laughs> Some things about me, I love Bayo's breakfast burritos. I eat them quite frequently. Um, I'm a bus driver, certified. Not really, but Not I'm pretty certified. good at it now. Um, I'm also from Lehigh. I'm a finance major, <laughs> good at Excel, that's about it. Uh, love really you, Really handy for business, True, by the way. If Excel you're is a sell, great, yeah. Yeah, great thing to know. Um, like she said, we love eating out and traveling. That's really cliche, but that's what we like to do. Um, I'm really stubborn. This helps with business and entrepreneurship. Um, and it also makes me a really bad employee, so it's a good thing I uh, work for myself. Um, I love to gamble, and I'm a thrill seeker. That also works well with entrepreneurship. Um, and I don't do all with authority. Again. <laughs> moving on. Oh, moving on. Yes, we are a couple. <laughs> Everyone always asks us. Um, we recently got engaged, actually, mm -hmm. last year. We're super excited. We've been together for like four-ish years, yeah. long time coming. Um, yeah, we were in Cabo over the break, and he popped a question, and I totally knew what was happening the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we want to start at the beginning. We are the cliche. I had a lemonade stand, and I loved my lemonade stand. My mom can attest, she's in the audience. I was way too into it. I had uh, twisty straws that I would try and upsell people for an extra 50 cents. I sold silly bands and sticky hands and all these little things. So that was kind of my first jump into entrepreneurship. Yeah, I wasn't as hardcore as Logan, honestly, but I sold lemonade as a kid, as we probably, probably all did. I would also sell eggs. I sold eggs one time. My mom can probably attest to this. <laughs> we had chickens, and so I would stand out and sell eggs. And I totally got ripped off once by this guy. So rude, right? I'm like 10 years old. Um, I used to make jewelry in high school, like so classic. And just I would sell my dance dresses on Instagram, just anything for a couple bucks. Um, and I would also babysit. But yeah. Is this your name? You. <laughs> okay, so let's get into how this kind of all started. So we love to thrift shop. We love dressing vintage. We still do. Um, and we would just go to DI all the time, and we saw all these people that were doing vintage reselling, and we're like, oh my gosh, why don't we do this? Like, this is so easy. And so we decided to start. There was four people initially, and we all just kind of put in 200 bucks because we were like, it's just 200 bucks. If we lose it, it'll kind of hurt because we're 18 years old. But it would have hurt. It would have. It would have probably hurt. Um, but we just kind of went for it, and we would go around to. It was mostly the DI. I've spent so many hours in the <laughs> DI in my short life. Um, and we just thrifted anything, everything. This is a picture from our original drop. This is stuff we thrifted. Oh my gosh, my shoes. Yeah. And my shoes that I'm wearing <laughs> right now, this is like four, three years ago or something. Um, yeah, and we just started on Instagram. And that's the next Yep, thing. simple start. Yeah. So fast forward to our first drop. So we did a whole summer of just trying to get stuff. Because at this point in time, we didn't know how all these like vintage stores were sourcing all their stuff. So we were, we were really good at garage sales. We did a lot of garage sales, stuff like that. Um, garage sales are awesome. Yeah. And so anyways, for our first drop, we didn't know how to like sell our clothes. Because obviously, we don't have a storefront. We don't have money for anything like that. 
So we just made an Instagram page and we sold to our friends. And as easy as that, like as simple as that is, it worked out. Um, so we auctioned off all these pieces on Instagram. We hired our friends as photographers, which I don't recommend working with your friends. That kind of got a little messy. Don't work with your friends. Um, but we really went for it and it went pretty good. We sold pretty much everything. And so we're like, okay, this is going so well, let's keep doing this, this is awesome. And then business started to slow down. We had probably like maybe a thousand followers on Instagram, maybe. And so we were just kind of cycling through our customers. You know, you can't buy off one Instagram page every other week. And so we didn't really have that many customers and sourcing became a huge issue. We were spending, like I said, so many hours at the DI and it was just unstable. You never know if you're gonna find something good. And yeah, unpredictable. And it took way too long to be profitable. We were probably making like 30 cents an hour or <laughs> yeah, something. Yeah. Like it just was- We weren't getting fun. paid. <laughs> we, we were not getting paid. Um, here are a couple pictures. Shout out my brother, that's my brother Stockton. He's not here today, so rude. <laughs> All right, and this is what I would call like our first big break. So our first real like shift from being like a side hustle, oh, we're buying clothes at DI to like, oh, maybe we can make a business out of this. Uh, we found a supplier. He's an old man named Frank and he lives in Texas and I still love him to this day. Um, so basically what he has access to that we don't have access to here in Utah are recycling centers. So there's all these recycling centers in other areas like he's from Texas where you can get stuff and you're not picking over thrifts and it's all just stuff that's otherwise gonna get cut up and turned into rags. And so we found this guy and he would ship us wholesale and it was amazing and we were stoked about it and we did all these photo shoots um, and we started to really do a lot of flea markets and pop-up shops and we were really starting to turn like what I thought at the time was like good revenue numbers. Um, definitely not enough to be paying ourselves minimum wage but enough money to, to keep the hope. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, we started getting big into events on the, is that your left? Um, that's classic skate in Orem. I don't know if anyone's familiar. They do like these uh, concerts every Wednesday and those were so fun. And we would just do little like flea markets, urban flea market was a big one. And that's when we really started like, like hustling, I feel like, you know, we started getting really into it. And you wanna tell them about the middle one? Yeah, so we loved the USU flea market. It was great selling here on campus because we are students here and so it's fun to sell here on campus, but the hosts of that farmer's market do not like us and we are no longer friends. We are now banned from the USU <laughs> farmer's market. But you can talk to us about that after if you're curious. <laughs> I won't say anything else. So at this point it was time, There was t we needed to change. We were just dumping way too many hours into events and into, we were getting these boxes but we had to like make sure everything was clean and half the stuff wasn't great quality and it was just tons and tons of time and it wasn't, that couldn't have been a business that actually paid us well. Um, and so, and there was people coming into the space, like I'm sure every person in this room knows at least someone that sells vintage. It's extremely common, very saturated market. And so we really wanted to set ourselves apart and we had been thinking about how to do that, but we weren't quite sure. Um, yeah, so we, are you are you guys familiar with Shark Tank that happens here at the end of the semester? Yes, Probably. yes, Probably, yes. if not, you um, will be in three you weeks. You will be, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we were actually, were we in the class at that point? I think we were in, yeah. actually in this class. It was my freshman year, and Logan signed us up for Shark Tank without <laughs> telling me, <laughs> but it ended up turning out really well. Um, we were planning on getting a brick and mortar store. We were like, okay, let's just like, test out, we looked at places in the mall, kind of all over the place. Um, yeah, and so 2022, we did the Shark Tank, and when we were uh, pitching to the Center for Entrepreneurship, Mike Glauser was like, how can we make this cheaper for you? Make the stakes a little lower, because I mean, having a brick and mortar store is a huge commitment, it's a ton of money, and we weren't sure it was gonna go well, and so he had, I believe he had toured, you toured the country with entrepreneurs in a bus? Or, yeah, 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 <laughs> something like that. Um, and he's like, what if you guys put it in a bus and kind of drove around Utah? And we're like, oh, that's a really good idea. So shout out Mike. 
Um, and so that and the support from the Center for Entrepreneurship, we have a ton of awesome mentors. If you guys ever want any help, go to the Center for Entrepreneurship. Yeah. And we won a little bit of money to get us started and we put it towards our bus. We should disclose we took last place in that competition. We lost. <laughs> we did lose. But we did it anyways. <laughs> So we took a risk. So at this point in time, we don't have any money. We're students just like you guys. We have zero dollars. It all goes to good old Utah State. Um, and so, I, sorry for everyone that was in the dinner. I told this story earlier. I love auctions. Like I love eBay. I love that stuff. It's one of my side hobbies. So I found a website that auctions buses. That's what they do. They auction buses. And I just lived on that site for weeks, just waiting for one to fall into something that we could afford. Because, I mean, obviously we didn't have $20,000 to throw around, so we needed a, a dirt cheap bus. Um, and I found one. We got lucky, one slipped through the cracks. It hit exactly, like with precision, what our budget limit was. And I bought it, and that was every single dollar we had. So pretty scary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Logan I'll take this slide. This yeah, so Ellie was on vacation during this. I was on so vacation. <laughs> the, this is genuinely how the process went because I had no idea what I was doing. I would wake up, I would drink caffeine, I would pretend like I knew what I was doing and like saw some seeds and stuff, I don't know, get another energy drink, realize I didn't know what I was doing, go watch a bunch of YouTube, more caffeine, continue, go until it's dark outside and then repeat, and I did that for four weeks. That was my life, and I honestly loved it. Like, it was like the greatest four weeks of all time, because, I don't know, I was doing something I wanted to do. Yeah. Yeah, props to Logan, he did most of this. I will say I helped with the logo on the outside, and with the second bus, oh, spoiler. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, Logan did most of this, so don't give me any credit. <laughs> Okay, so then we finished the bus, and we have no money left, and we need to start selling some clothes. Um, and we didn't know what we were doing. We Number one, I did not realize how much harder it is to drive a bus and just work a bus than it is a normal car. There, I don't know, I've never driven a diesel. I, I didn't know what I was doing. So huge learning curve there, tons of hours on YouTube again. Um, and Ellie began contacting a bunch of small businesses because we knew we needed to park this bus, but it's not like we're going to park it in our front yard. Where are we going to put it? Um, and so Ellie hit up a ton of small businesses and events and fairs and yeah. So like you said, I was kind of in charge of planning events and coordinating events and I got told no all the time, like so many times. Um, and like, honestly, we didn't really have a following. No one really knew our brand yet. We didn't have much of a brand image. And I will admit, I probably poorly communicated our ideas. I was like, can I put my bus in your business? It's hard to communicate because no one has and seen like, this before. No, you're insane. So yeah, that didn't, <laughs> that wasn't, that didn't go very well. Um, yeah, event managers didn't really want to deal with us. It's not really something that's been done. Like, there's food trucks. That's kind of how I just tried to describe it as, is like a thrift store, but it's a food truck. Um, and they, it's just kind of difficult. We take up a lot of room. We need a generator. And yeah, I sent hundreds of cold emails. And no one really took us seriously. I mean, we're, we still are kids, and we were kids. and. Yeah. No one wants to work with some kids that don't know what they're doing. And th yeah, the bus, like I said, the bus is really hard to deal with and maneuver. I suck at it still to this day, so. And, oh yeah, this is a little side note. I hate rejection. So this was great rejection therapy for me. <laughs> just be told no over and over and over again. So I had to stay resilient. <laughs> We finally got through to one big event. We had done a bunch of little small events, but nothing that had really paid off. And we finally got through to ForkFest in 2022. They let us in, and it was the greatest day ever. We did like, I don't know, like a couple thousand in sales, and that was mind-blowing to us at the yeah. time, that we could do that in one day at one event. Um, it was awesome. It was like when we, I really realized, I was like, whoa, if we do this every day at the correct place, this can actually turn into something. We could actually make some money. Yeah, it was a huge jump. We, when we didn't have the bus and we would just do events, I feel like 500 would be our max. Like 500 was a good day. So to jump to 2000, we were like so excited. Like, oh my gosh, like this is finally happening. 
and it kind of just made us feel a little, little bit better about all the hard, unrewarding work that we had done before. <sighs> yeah, just going off that, it was definitely a summer of learning. Like I said, we had no, we had no idea what we were doing. No one had ever done this before, you know. And I mean, Logan especially put a lot of manual labor into this bus, and we didn't even know if it was going to work. And it ended up working a little bit. And it was really exciting. It was really fun. We got to tour basically the whole state of Utah the last two years and see new places, um, connect with small business owners. It's been a really, really cool experience. And oh, onto our website. So throughout this, we've kind of been playing with a website because we were like, okay, we eventually need to scale. How are we going to do this? And so we hopped on Wix.com and paid for a subscription and started building our website. And then we realized that it is really hard to sell vintage online, like on a website, because everything's one of a kind and just dealing with like SKUs and inventory, it was a huge mess. So that was a massive fail. We have lots of other fails that are not we included have so on this. so many but. fails, yeah. Oh, and we only <laughs> crashed the bus a few times. I I feel like I didn't. I've crashed the bus a it lot was, of times. Okay, yeah, it was definitely Logan that crashed the bus, but I didn't drive the bus very yeah. much. When we were together, I made him drive. If you look, if you're ever at the bus, if you look at the top, you will see dents, and I can tell you the story behind every single one of them. All right, so <laughs> we wanted to scale. Like Ellie said, we had tried the website, website flopped, but how do we scale? How do we make more money? How do we make this bigger? And so we were like, well, what if we bought another bus? We could have two buses running at the same time. And it sounded awesome because we ran into this issue where all big events happen on the same days. They're in the spring and the summer, and they're on Friday, Saturday. And we wanted to be able to go to all of them, but all of them overlap. And so we were like, oh, let's build another bus. And so we did, and we dumped like, and it was like twice the amount of money we put into the first bus on the second bus, and it had so many problems. So many problems. Oh, that's the title yeah. of this next <laughs> slide. Um, yeah, lots of issues. We ended up paying this sweet, sweet man of a mechanic so much money. And I mean, there was problems with storage. We had this weird situation where we lived at home at the summers, but we're in Logan during the school year, and so we need places to put our buses, and people were calling the cops on us all the time. And so that was an issue because now we had to have double the storage we had before. And oh, this picture is so bad. Um, we were trying to train new people, too to run that second bus, and it just ended up being an absolute nightmare. No one knows how to drive a bus. <sighs> no one Someone, can legally drive a bus. No one can legally drive a bus. Um, that's not true, they can have a CDL. But, um, so we let some guy try to drive it and test it out, and he ended up crashing, bless his soul. He scraped into the wall pretty bad. Um, so yeah, that was super difficult. Also, I've never like really trained a person before, like, I, I don't know how to do that. I'm not a professional. And so that was a huge lesson. We had some miserable weekends. This picture is from our trip to, was that St. George? One of our trips to St. George, on our way back, the bus started overheating. So we had to pull over and we had to crash in the Walmart parking lot in the pullout bed in the back. And so we just had to be really scrappy and figure everything out as we went. And it was really tough. The whole the whole thing, it's really tough and a lot of hard work. And we just needed to outsource some of that work, and, but it felt like it was impossible, like something needed to happen. I'm realizing now our tone is very negative. We had oh. a lot of fun adventures during this time failures. period. We'll we, I know, I know. We, uh, it's really fun. We stayed at all sorts of different hotels and we slept in the bus and we adventured to different places and it was, it was genuinely really fun. It was, we just did it too much. <laughs> Oh, okay, that's what this oh. was about. Yeah, burning out. Yeah. yeah here's my positive side. <laughs> <laughs> I did awesome. So, yeah, burning out. You're going to be burned out if you're going to own your own business. It's just inevitable because you're doing the same thing every day. And the different part versus having a normal job is when you leave work, you don't stop thinking about work. You think about it and you dream about it, and it's just, it lives in your head. And it's exhausting, so it burns you out. Um, and that's really something that we've learned to deal with over this past year, I would say. Um, 
partnership really helped us. We very much lean on each other, and when one of us is just dying, the other one just picks up the slack, and it's great. Uh, we also have fun together, and so that's that's good to enjoy our work environment. Yeah. yeah. I would say if you're thinking about, if you have a business with a partner, or you're thinking about starting a business with a partner, make sure you find someone you trust and someone you don't clash with most of the time. We clash <laughs> all the time, but... I mean, we figured out how to get past it and how to work when one of us is struggling and it just kind of works out because we have that trust that, you know, this isn't permanent, it's temporary and yeah. So find someone you trust. This is my slide. So bus number two was not working out and we couldn't scale. We were like, oh, I don't want to buy another one and do this all over again just for it to break. Because we're, we're buying these buses used, yeah. and they just they come with baggage, all of them. And so we were like, OK, maybe we'll like dabble in reworks. We'll see what people like. Um, and so we found out people really liked them. And they were really cool. We figured out a supply chain and started kind of working on our website a little bit more. And then winter hit, and events in the winter are non-existent. And we would have to do it ourselves. And winter is just, it's not worth it to be open. And so we were like, OK, we need, we need to do something. We need to generate revenue in these off months. And Logan's gradu Logan and I are both graduating this year. We need a life plan, you know? We can't just. Yeah do whatever. And so, click. <laughs> so we want to do reworks. So just for some background, reworks are we take damaged textiles that would otherwise end up cut up or in landfills, um, and we combine them into new pieces. And so the thought, just like Ellie said, was, OK, right now we can sell to this little tiny area that we're living in. How do we reach the rest of the United States? And the answer was obvious. It was a website, right? But we had tried that before, and it failed. Um, and we thought that these reworks would be a way for us to really distinguish ourselves um, and to really like actually drive traffic to our website. So we began our e-commerce journey. And this is the most recent one. I think we started in like October? Uh, last it's, summer is when we first oh, started. Oh, last summer. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> and so we entered, so TikTok Shop got released. And our sweet, sweet prince, TikTok Shop, <laughs> has been so awesome. No one had really, no one's really figured out the platform 100% yet. And so it was a new opportunity. We could jump on it. We could figure it out before anyone else could. And. Then we began spending, we had been spending ad money, but we really began spending ad money on Instagram specifically. And that is something that's so worth it. We didn't, we're like, oh, marketing actually works. Yeah. Like, oh, Duh. Yeah. that's my major, but whatever. <laughs> um, <laughs> and it was so worth it. We saw such a, a good response. And so we really hopped on it. We saw this opportunity and we took it. I mean, we had to adapt. We weren't making any money in the winter, and this was a great way where we could be in school and do this barely. Yeah. Dying, but barely. And so, yeah, we found a way to scale, and we, we've been experimenting with this thing we call mass customization, and it's rework. So, like Logan was talking about, these uh, recycled, reworked old materials. But in the same pattern, but different colors, uh, different materials, and people can buy one and let us know what colors they prefer. And it's almost like a surprise that they get. And it's actually worked out really well. People really like it. Yeah, because we found that people want to choose what they are getting, right? Like if, if they know it's being reworked, they want to choose the colors they're getting and whatnot. But to do that, to have them place an order and then have it made and then ship it to them, that's just a long process. Long and people, process. people want their products immediately. So what we do now is we mass customize, and we have hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands, of different patterns on the and different colors that people can be like, hey, I really like purple and orange, and we already have a jacket that's purple and orange, so we can give them, and they're happy because they got to pick what they got, but it doesn't look like anyone else's. Okay, I think this is my slide too. So what's next for us? We're going to graduate. Oh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's step one. We <laughs> this semester is hard. 
we it's uh very hard. it's as you guys know school is hard enough alone and so doing school and like trying to run a business is really really hard but we're almost there we're so negative i know this whole I thing know. we're Anyways. like my life is so hard <laughs> but it's fun we love it yeah. um we're gonna continue to do bus events but we're learning from last year so last year we really we I mean, in our heads, the more events you do, the more money you make. Like, it's just like a simple equation. And what we've realized is it's better for us to do less events that are higher quality so that that demand is still there and so people still want to come. So we're still going to do events, even though it's really our e-commerce that has taken off. Um, and we're going to work on expanding. And like was mentioned earlier, we have three buses, and we want to have those all operational and running um, and hitting these big different events. Um, we're going to keep hitting e-commerce really hard. We It's been awesome. We have a. Uh, the, so the, we, there's one main product that's done really well, and we're now working with a designer to develop a whole new line for this upcoming year of like seven different items that range from pants to button downs to all, all sorts of stuff that we're really stoked about. And we're going to adapt whenever we need to, because that's how we've done this business the whole time, is anytime there's been an opportunity, we've just pivoted at that opportunity. And so if something jumps in our face, we're just going to chase it, because that's what we've yeah. been doing. We talked about this a little before, well, I don't know, but... Adapting keeps you relevant, mm -hmm. and I mean, people are going to copy you. People have copied us, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but if you have a good idea, people are going to copy you regardless. And so you just have to keep, you have to be on your toes all the time. You have to figure out what you're going to do next, how to differentiate yourself, and yeah, just be on your toes. That's my advice. Okay, our key takeaways are to take risks, number one. I really struggle with this. Logan's way better. Mr. Gambler over here is way better at taking risks than I am. It's something that's a lot more, that's a lot scarier to me, but I mean, he's the big risk taker. I like to play it safe, so we kind of have a healthy medium, which works out, but we wouldn't be here today if we didn't take any risks. So regardless of what you do, you're gonna have to take risks to be successful. And having a support system is so important. Without Logan and my family, our families, I guess, we could not have done this. We have received so much support and our mentors and, our, and the Center for Entrepreneurship. <laughs> Let me shout out everyone here. Um, it's been really important to rely, be able to rely on other people during hard times, during times when you're feeling burnt out. Uh, that's just been really important for me. And having a passion for what you're doing, super important. I uh, really care about sustainability, and uh, that's just been one of my driving factors. I really hate all the fashion waste there is, and it's a huge problem. It causes so many issues. And so I'm super passionate about that, and I love fashion too, so it's like the perfect two and two together. Um, having a passion, it just keeps you going when you yeah. run out of motivation because we all run out of motivation. It's, it just happens. So actually loving what you're doing. I genuinely love every day. I may not love every task, but I love every day that I'm working on a business that's super fulfilling. <sighs> be unique. We have had to be unique many times. Um, I kind of mentioned this earlier, but that's just something that's really crucial to success is you have to be unique. You can't just do what everyone else is doing. And working hard, you, we've kind of really pushed on this. You have to work so hard. We have put in so many blood, bloods? <laughs> but so much blood, sweat, and tears into our business. And it's been really rewarding. And yeah, you just yeah. I don't know, One hard. thing that's great about working hard when it's your own business, though, is you find this new little source of energy that didn't exist before. Um, and that's awesome because everyone yeah. wants to have more energy throughout the day. So I don't know if you feel like you don't have time to start something because you're too stressed out. It might actually end up being more of a stress reliever because you get to think about something and put energy towards something that you enjoy and that you care about. And that, like, benefits you, mm -hmm. like, 100%. Um, this is kind of cheesy, but it brings so much meaning to your life when you're working towards something directly toward your future. I don't know, it's just really fulfilling. It's super cheesy, but. And last thing, change is a good thing. I really struggle with change. It's really hard for me. Like when we got a bus, I every, honestly, at every stage I've been so iffy, but Logan's been the one to be like, I really have a good feeling about this. I feel like we should do it. And at the end of the day, change is what takes you from 
A to B. So, yeah. Yeah. Excited. Kept it short and sweet for you guys. Sorry, we did not. What question do you guys got? Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? Yeah. Yeah, someone, someone asked this question in the, at the dinner. So <laughs> it's really, like, kind of like I mentioned, you find like a new energy reserve, like when you're doing something you really care about. Because um, we, we sleep, we still get our sleep, so it didn't come out we of our, our sleep, sleep, and yeah. we get our school work done, so it didn't come out of there. You just, that, those little bits of free time that used to just kind of disappear are now dedicated to something that you love. And I, yeah. I will say early mornings. That has been, I've always kind of been more of a morning person in general, but if you wake up early, you get more done. And it's like as simple as that. On days that I know I have a ton to do, I wake up early, I work out, and then I'm set for the day. So I just think, yeah, you gotta sacrifice something. And it's been 100% of our free time, so. I'll be honest, our social lives have suffered a little bit. We do not full have transparency, social lives, but. Right. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, how have you guys scaled the rework of pieces? Like, do you guys sew all of those yourselves, or did you like outsource that? How do you do that? Yeah. So the reworks are outsourced. That would be impossible for us. There's actually tons of creators that make reworks, and like, I can't feel bad for them because you can't scale when you're making everything. It's just impossible. Yeah, um, so yeah. So we outsource it. And actually, I should dive deeper into that. Yeah, We're say. very proud of our supply chain. We, <laughs> we pay a lot more than we would if we just were cool having it made in China by who knows who. So we verified our whole supply chain and all of our seamstress shops, and we pay higher margins or higher prices for that. Uh, but it's worth it to us because I don't want to feel guilty when I'm selling stuff. You know what I'm saying? I, I would feel guilty. And so we've put a lot of effort into our supply chain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in the back. The bus did keep food on the table for the most part. We lived with our parents in the summer, so rent was covered. We had to get really creative. We, the first few years of this before we had the bus, we would work through everything and just try to do all three. But when it became enough to have food on the table, that's when we quit or started school and ended up being okay. So this helped us help support us through school, which was so nice. We did have to rely on our parents a lot. They, yeah, shout if out we, parents. If we couldn't have lived with our parents, which I know some people can't do that, then I don't think we could have swung it financially. Because in the summers, we were doing this, right? And then we both also worked other jobs. I worked, I worked a construction job, and she was I worked, worked a, fast food. Yeah. And so kind of just all hours of the day running to make sure we did have money in the bank account. Yeah. Well, um, we, like we mentioned earlier, we're talking with the designer and we're hoping to drop like seven new items and we're hoping to kind of evolve it into a reworked website while still doing the bus because we love the bus, but we're hoping to really attack that e-commerce and it's been a lot more profitable than the bus has with less man hours. And so hopefully we can do that. That's our plan for after college, so. We're really betting on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I mean, we, something that we've done recently is kind of found people that are successful in the fashion space that do things similar to us. And we've been like, okay, how do we get from where we are to where they are? And kind of broken down what that looks like revenue per year wise, what that looks like quantity of products wise, stuff like that. And so that's kind of how we've outlined how, what our next five years are gonna look like. Yeah. That's hard. So um, we're kind. Of, we're lucky. Ours is clothing. That's a pretty accessible supply chain. Um, honestly, I so our first supplier, like I mentioned, I actually I love eBay. I said that earlier too. 
I was buying stuff on eBay and I would just attach a message to everything I was buying and I'd be like, hey, I actually am looking for wholesale if you offer that. And most of them didn't, but I did find one person that was. So it's really kind of just quantity of outreach yeah. unless you have someone that has a connection. Yeah, sometimes it's just who you know, yeah. which sucks. Which is hard, yeah. And you just have to do so much outreach to get to those people, but once you find them, I feel like you're set. Yeah. So you said your niche um, when you started was having the bus, but how are you having a niche online? I know there's a lot of similarities in the traditional side. That's a good question. Sure. Do you want to remember? Sure. Yeah. Um, so it's been hard because originally we thought our niche would be the products we designed, right? And we designed this jacket that we loved and it sold really well, but we realized pretty quickly people copy anything that sells well, like immediately. And so within like four months of that product being out, there was a bunch of dupes. And so really what we're working on doing for differentiating ourselves and setting ourselves apart is our new product designs, but we just got to keep them rolling, right? If you're the first one, you'll sell the best and you'll probably sell the most, um, but you have to keep those new designs coming. Yeah, that and customer service is our big thing. We try to have outstanding customer service 100% of the time. We try to make sure every single customer is satisfied and they have good things to say. And when you're dealing with e-commerce, that's kind of the best you can do when it comes to actually differentiating yourselves. It's well, besides the product, of course, but how well is this, like, how well is the service, yeah. I guess? There's one other thing I realized that I left out. We, we, cared, we realized people loved the bus because the product didn't change. The product was the same. It was just the delivery of the product. And so we wanted to incorporate that with our online sales as well. And so with that, we have when you order a package from us, you get a nice box that's branded on the outside. And when you open it, it's packaged to feel like you're opening a present. And it has tissue paper and like stickers on it and stuff like that. And so that's kind of what we've tried to do. But yeah. It's kind of a combination. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it is the magic it school is. bus. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> no, I am we're not, not worried. worried no. I don't think it'll be an issue. Our main logo is actually that circle in the middle. Um, but we just kind of played off the magic school bus. And we haven't have. been sent to cease and desist yet. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's it, we'll wrap it up. Thank you guys. Thank you.